Hello. Hello, everybody. Hi from Awanli. Awanli, say hi. Say hello to the people. Hello. Good afternoon. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. <laughs> um, hi. Let's start from hi again. I'm a bit anxious to make today's video. Can you tell? I mean, I mentioned in my last video what today's video is going to be about. So I'm guessing everybody who is here, if you just stumbled upon this video, hi. But I'm guessing, you know, those of you who are here intentionally already know why today's video is making me anxious. So um, let's start from the beginning. <laughs> hi, my name is Amara. Um, I am a lesbian woman, creator, filmmaker, living, loving, existing in Nigeria. This is my cat. <laughs> oh. I'm always like, what's going on? This is my cat, Amoli Kego Simba. <laughs> um, today's video is going to be a sit down where I just um, bring you into some um, experience that shaped me to a particular experience that shaped me and inspired my new film, my debut film, my film that just came out. Um, so, um, yeah if you're ready to watch this film if you're interested to watch this film you know what to do don't go anywhere first of all um get something i have a bottle of water here i have my cat here i also have um haribo jelly beans so ooh, my cat doesn't want to stay are you going is it time to go wait stay with me stay with me buddy stay with me um yeah, get something that will help you enjoy this video. Get something that will help you be comfortable with this video. And oh, oh, okay. She's gone. And if it's a person that will help you enjoy this video, you know what to do. Pause this video. Go call your person. No, this is not for you, my baby. Go call your person. Tell your person that Amara has released a new one. And today's one, today's video is a special one. So yeah, you might as you might actually wait for your person and wait to switch your person to be. Yeah, trust me, I wish Alainka was here making this video with me. So yeah, um, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Subscribe if you're just seeing for the first time. Sit back, relax, and yeah, let's get into it. So before I start this video, I just want to acknowledge people who I know in person that are, watching, that are going to watch this video. Hi, it's my sister. Hi, it's Alainka's sisters. That's my partner's sisters. Um, I know you people watch my videos. Hi to our families, basically, right? The video, what I'm going to talk about today is going to be a bit um, heavy for you and maybe triggering for you. And I just love the, I mean, for me, I know Yinka have had to probably tell the story to her elder sister or something, I'm not sure. But um, I just love how um, you people have known this part of Ola and Kanai's relationship, or you people have, I don't even love, I don't love that you heard about that most of our life um most of this experience was publicized over the internet and you heard about it some family members heard about it over the internet some family members just you know heard more about it over the internet at first you knew something happened and you knew we were at the hospital for a bit but you didn't really know details and um you know we are a queer couple a lesbian couple with nigerian families of course there was like a limit and boundary to how much you guys could question us or ask us so yeah um as you watch this video i hope that this video gives you um more like an insight to what we've had to grow survive build from right it's no this is not just gossip or telling finally telling you what happened or finally knowing the details of what happened we're a lesbian couple we're a nigerian lesbian couple who didn't we we never had um um, a textbook or a guideline or something or anyone who taught us or showed us the way everything we know everything we have we built from scratch so welcome to today's video first first um, I want to acknowledge your existence I hope um, this video is not too heavy for my family members and all I think as family members I just like as I was think of this video uh, making the video I, 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 it hits me that our families are going to watch this video and it's going to finally be like oh okay this is what actually happened that period so yeah 
I wanted to acknowledge your presence and my friends, those are my friends, I feel like all, almost all my friends. I don't know if there's anybody I call a friend that doesn't know the incident I'm about to talk about. I don't know. So yeah, so yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> I feel like I should take water before I start. Mm -hmm. So the story starts um, when Ola and Kana I met, right? So before we met, I was this very, um, I would like to say I was this very happy girl, right? I was going through it a lot and dealing with my own things like um, childhood trauma and if you've been watching me a while, if you've been following me a while on any of my social media platforms, you probably know this, right? Growing up, one of the most um, painful things I was dealing with was just understanding the things that happened to me as a child and why they happened. I mean, imagine just being a person in this life, you don't, you're just growing, then things have happened like the kind of what um you know like kind of parents you have right so for me growing up one of the things i had to deal with or just like unpack was like oh yeah the kind of parents i had like my dad especially my dad and i didn't really get along um and you know this is not to say that i didn't have a father who provided for me or paid my school fees i did i just had a father who also was battling with his own demons and things so i got like um i got burnt by that so growing up like one of the things i was dealing with was like yeah you know unpacking why that happened right i was <laughs> constantly crying about it and telling everybody who listened who cared to listen to me you know like this is what I'm trying to make sense of. Why would my father do this to me? Why would my father do like, you know, things like that. But all in all, I, I think I was a happy person, right? Then I went to school, I left the country, I went to Cyprus, and I met this girl, <laughs> right? Meeting Olenka was one of, it's still one of the most amazing things that's ever happened to me, right? So, um, a month, two months, three months, four months, five months into our relationship, um, we started getting to know more of each other. But it wasn't a, I wouldn't say it wasn't in a way that, oh, I didn't expect this. Because, you know, when you meet a person, you go through that talking stage, you talk a lot, you tell each other everything. So we knew each other's stories, right? So when the effect of what we had told each other started playing, started coming into play, I feel like I, I, I was too chill. I don't know. I don't know. There was, there was a way that it didn't surprise me, and maybe it should have. I was twenty-one, I think. I was twenty-one. She was twenty-four. Maybe it should have surprised me or scared me. No, no, no. Yeah, the word is scared. Maybe it should have scared me, but it just didn't. And I'm, th I'm, I'm. I'm I'm sure, looking back now, even right now, I can tell you the fact that why it didn't scare me is because I had like history with um, anger. I met this person, like I met this very sweet person. She was really sweet, and things would happen that would trigger her, and she would get really angry, like really angry. She'd walk out, she'd storm out, she'd you know bang the door, things like that. And you know, I, it didn't scare me. It should have, but it didn't. Before Yinka, I was this, you know, sweet loving, I would like to consider myself a sweet loving girl who would gather her friends, cook with her friends, host her friends over for like dinner nights, game nights and things like that. That was things I loved, I enjoyed doing, I enjoyed hosting people, right? Um, I wasn't a violent person. Like, let me first start with that story. I was never a violent person. Even far back to like my secondary school. Those of you who went to secondary school with me can confirm in the comment section down below in case anybody watches me, right? I, I hated violence so much that even when I had like the authority to maybe smack a younger one, like a junior student or beat a junior student or punish a junior student, I never engaged in those. I can say with my chest that I went to secondary school without flogging, smacking any junior student at all. That was how much I don't believe in violence. I didn't believe in violence. I was never like I was not a violent person, right? So yeah, see me growing up, you know, learning left the country went to school then i met this girl and i fell in love and those of you who are lesbians might begin to you know um connect to the story 
lesbians are fast if you're not if you're not a lesbian let me first tell you lesbians are fast it's two women in love the vulnerability is easy the connection the comfort it is easy you tell each other everything you just you're each other's best friends and it's just soft and warm and all of that until the anger comes in until the trauma comes in until the trigger comes in right and Olenka and I experienced that Yinka is Yinka I met this really sweet person she was really sweet have you ever watched Yinka up close and personal laugh she's so beautiful when she's laughing she's really sweet she goes all out for people she loves she's really kind tender when i was in school she would stay up late with me to like study something that i wasn't understanding she would do anything to make sure you pass your courses that was yinka that was yinka i was in love with in school and it was so amazing right and then this person will get angry will get triggered and it would be like the, a whole different other person right and that did not scare me that should have that should have scared me maybe if i came from a different background a different upbring upbringing when yinka got that way it should have scared me but it didn't scare me i grew up with an angry dad i grew up with a dad who could chain me up with dog chains so a, a person getting mad walking out and slamming the door didn't scare me it made me jerk but it just didn't scare me or a person shouting when they get angry didn't scare me even though i knew i didn't want it and i kept on telling her i don't like when you like it became a thing where you know she would shout i would shut down and then when we start talking again i'll tell her you know when you shout you remind me of my dad then back then honestly i wasn't a social media person we didn't i don't I, we didn't have language like like we do now we didn't even know like i did not even know some of the things that we I have experienced or people have experienced in my hand have been things that could be called like abuse or this or that I honestly didn't i just really from my upbringing i just thought this was life this was people this was human and people get angry people shout i although i could feel it building something inside of me right i went from a person who didn't believe in violence or didn't used to shout or like when she would shout i would just keep quiet and walk away or something like that and i love this person i didn't want to leave this person i also wasn't scared of this thing so i didn't even find a problem with it like right but what then happened on my own end was i kind of drank i don't know it kind of like why i say drank no it kind of like woke up like my own beast right i remember the first time like i got violent something was happening between us and i was just you know something just snapped like no i'm not your like no you're not my dad if if that man could do this to me no not anybody else i would never going like i remember the, i legit remember the thoughts in my head the first time i got violent with yinka the thought in my head was you're not my dad and if that man could do it to do this thing to me and get away with it you shouldn't be able to you shouldn't no one else should get away with it i should be able to fight back um i can't take like I, I was measuring our height like i was measuring the size I'm like i can't take this person what is this i shouldn't be the person people should do this to people should shout at people should it was just it was a lot right and nobody should get there in love <laughs> That's that nobody should get to there in love, right? I, we 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 both and I'll say it I'll say I'll speak for myself and I'll speak for the person who I know is my best friend. Even Yinka did not even know. Um she knew what she was doing was problematic. She knew she was trouble. She knew what she was doing was not okay. She just did not even she even had did not have language to call out herself. We both would talk about it. We both would hold each other. We both would cry. We both would apologize. We both talk about how these are the things our parents used to do to us and we don't want to be these people. And we would always find ourselves in that circle. One person would get angry. One person would probably try to like okay remind the other person you remember what we said and the person probably not here and the other person would like be triggered because I know be your mate now you're not shouting at a fool you're not shouting at a person who is not wounded to you're wounded and wounded right we're both coming from hard places right it's not like one person was coming from love and the other person was coming from survival and the other person's love could like no we both were coming from hard places the only thing that we had in common was that we both really loved and cared for each other that was a good thing and that, that was also a bad thing it made, it made it so that we both did not leave it made it so that we both stayed and triggered each other some more and some more and some more right until 
we were becoming things that we didn't want to be. I, <laughs> I remember the one time, I remember one time after I started dating Ola Inka, I went to visit the, a boy I used to see and we had like a minor disagreement and he was going to walk away from me and I drew him back like, don't you fucking dare walk away from me. I remember him coming, like he actually fell. He didn't even come, like he lost his balance, he fell. I, he was on the floor the next minute I looked. Then I remember him standing up and just looking at me like, who are you? Like, that's how much I, that's how much the, the beast inside of me woke up and <laughs> took over. He said by shouting back, like, oh, she'll shout and I'll shout back or should um, walk away and I'll probably hit something. Like, it's there by little, little things and it's there growing, like it's there growing. Like, it just, we said, it's like as, as uh, elasticity limits. We start slacking the thing, we start expanding it until it got to a place where we start slacking. So something then happened, right? So one night, um, Olenka and I were having an intense moment, something had happened. I can't remember what had happened, but if I'm to guess, it probably had something to do with the boy I was seeing before the relationship, right? My ex-boyfriend, ex-boyfriend. So we lived in an apartment complex and he lived upstairs and once in a while he would either come to the house and knock and check in or like we were cool. He was one of my best friends at the time, so we were cool. Olenka, wasn't really buying that relationship right she came from she came from a history where girls would date her and date boys so she was really wounded in that whole having a boy by the side department she wasn't believing he's just an ex like i like i legit broke up with this person to be with olayinka but no she, she like the the demons would not be like get it believe it and hold on to it they would always like come knocking through that door so I can't remember what was happening that period. I just don't remember something had happened. So I left the house just because I didn't want to fight. I was not in the mood and all of that. So I left the house. I went to a, um, a, a, um, a hostel complex just opposite our apartment complex, right? I went to see this, uh, this person I was talking with, this girl I was talking with. Um, just for the case of this video, because um, just for the case of this video, actually, I'm going to call people's names. I'm sorry. I'm, I know this part not popular, so they wouldn't know their names. It's just those people would actually understand where they fit in in all of this. So the girl's name is Wumi. So I went over to Wumi's room. It was okay. Then it was 12 midnight. And the security in her hostel was knocking and reminding people to tell their guests to leave because it's past guest time. So the security came to her room and asked me to leave because I was not, you know, I was not um, registered with the hostel. So I left, I had to go back home. I went back home thinking, oh well, yeah, the house might be cooler. But we went back, I went back home, Yinka was still in the mood and um, I was uninterested. I just remember that night, I was not interested. Usually when Yinka was in the mood like that, after a, a time, after a bit, I'll probably be interested that she's my friend. I'll sit her down, I'll give her attention. Inga used to be like this huge, big baby that needed attention, like, in, a, a, anyways. So that day, I was not in the mood. I was just like, I was not in the mood, right? And then I get back home, Inga was so angry. She had, I, I can't remember, I really cannot, my brain has blocked everything that happened i okay yeah i remember not even going home i remember staying downstairs but being cold then i asked um my ex to bring me a jacket oh yes i remember that's what happened i didn't go i didn't go upstairs after i left room's room by midnight i didn't go upstairs like i was legit like guys if you've ever been in a toxic relationship you understand there are sometimes when you're just completely drained like you don't want to have a conversation you don't want to have you, you know it will, it will be a fight and you don't want to fight you're just drained that was i i was ready to sleep outside that night as if my spirit knew i did not want to go home so i tell um the boy i was saying I also want to call his name, um, but you know, Joseph, his name is Joseph. So I tell Joseph to bring a, um, a sweater for me, a jacket for me or something. 
So he brought it downstairs. Also, I didn't want to talk about what was happening in my relationship. I, I mean, I broke up with this person to be with this person. Now I'm in this, I'm this whole different person. I'm in this to toxic relationship. Of course, I don't talk to you about it. Of, of course. Then he's giving me the jacket. I look up to my, my, um, what's it called? Uh, balcony and that is that was the moment Olenka decides to open the door to come out to look down to check for me or something then she sees us together oh, I can't like I really cannot remember I really cannot remember if she was about to come downstairs and I, then I ran up like I don't remember I just remember something made me just you know what fuck this go back inside right so I went back inside and I was just like telling Joseph to please go book back to his apartment because Yinka was really that level of crazy. Yinka will come downstairs and cuss you out. I'm like, she was young, come on. She was young, traumatized, and going through a lot of things. No excuse, true, but like, yeah. <laughs> so I didn't want her to encounter Joseph. I didn't want Joseph to encounter that. So I was just like, okay, okay, thank you for the jacket. Just go, 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 go. And then I think I went back upstairs. So I go upstairs. And we're having this whole round of just stay with, like I legit was just parambulating, trying to make sure there was a separation. It's not like Yinka gets physical. Yinka was like, do you understand? Yinka was the I was the first person to get Yink, I was the first person to get physically physical with Yinka before she was physical with me. Like I slapped the first person who slapped who in our relationship was me. Yinka wasn't a physical person. It's just she got annoying in a way that it was in your space like it would choke you it would this she was a big baby in a way like it was she was she, inka wasn't the kind of angry where she'll get angry and leave her anger will make you uncomfortable right like it was anyways so I kept trying to like create distance between us. There was like the time where I was on the side of the car, she was on the side of the car. So I was just like, yo man, just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. I remember that night, I was just like, leave me alone. And the more I was doing leave me alone, the more she was just like not getting it because I'm here angry, needing love, attention. And she was a baby. And you're over there giving me space and acting like I'm going to beat you. So you feel the need to want to prove, but you know I'm not going to beat you babe just like it was i don't know and i'm not even trying to make excuses for anyone as i'm explaining the story it's just we were in the trenches of toxic relationship y'all yinka and i were in the tr trenches honestly so i was just like leave me alone leave me alone like i was okay then i made to reach for the door i, I made to go for the door then she rushed and she blocked me there was like the time she rushed to block me I mean, she did that. There was a knife. We, we stayed in a, um, um, what they call this? What they call this? The studio apartments. The kitchen, the kitchen, the, 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 the living room had a kitchenette, right? There was, there was a knife in the counter of the kitchenette. Honestly, I seriously don't remember what I was intending for. I just know I just needed this person to get away from my road. This was past midnight. This was like 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. or something. But I would rather be outside than be here with this person. That was all. So I took the knife. I said, leave me alone. Leave me alone, Inka. Leave me alone. If you come close to me, I'll stab you. And Inka did Inka. Inka was such a baby and stupid. Because Yenka just saw that as a come close to Amara. This is silly. Come close to Amara. So she made to come close to me and I, I pushed. Guys, it was a push with both hands. I pushed her, like I swerved her behind me, like pushed her into the bathroom and then ran for the door. I didn't even think that I was holding a knife. I ran for the door. I was about to close the door when I heard Inka scream, Babe, 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 I'm hurt. Babe, babe, I'm hurt. I thought she was lying. I even closed the door. I was like, ah, what if it's not a lie? So I opened the door. I ran to the bathroom. I opened the bathroom. All I see is blood and Inka on the floor and holding her neck. I, I don't remember 
I don't remember the sequence of events. I just know I was like, I ran between car, then ran upstairs to like my ex-boyfriend's house and I was pounding the door like, Joseph, please, Joseph, please, Joseph, please come and help me. Like he's coming out with his friends, with his housemates. Everybody were running down to my apartment. We we're looking for my car keys cause we had like this car we were renting. We found the car keys. I think Joseph was the one who carried the car keys. His friends, his roommates helped carry him car. Then we went downstairs and they put her in the car and they drove us to the hospital. Immediately we get to the hospital, they admitted her. They took her into emergency. The church behind, the church close to me, distracted me so much, but I, I've already started, so I can't even stop now. <laughs> Anyways, and let's just continue. Um, we get to the hospital, they admitted her immediately. They put her in emergency. The hospital were obligated to call the police. They called the police. The police came. Police sat with me, interrogated me. They stayed with me until she woke up because they said they, were, they, were, they can't leave me until she wakes up and gives them her own, her own statement. They need to know that I didn't attempt to kill her or anything. So the police stayed with me. And you know, I have to narrate with some white police, Turkish policemen, you know, that I'm in a relationship with this person and we're fighting. And you know, I like, I, I was so shaken. I told them everything and they took down my statement. So we call, um, I think on the way to the hospital, Joseph's roommate was asking what happened, what happened? I couldn't even think, I just said, ah, she fell, she fell. I didn't say anything to them, I was like, she fell, she fell in the bathroom. So when we get to the hospital, I was telling the police that, you know, we're having a misunderstanding. I was cooking, I was in a knife, so I pushed her. That's what I told them. So the police stayed with me until Yinka wakes up and they asked her. She gave her, sent her statement and she told them it was an accident. Like I was outside when they went in to meet her and she told them it was an accident. So they came back to meet me and said, yeah, she, the patient is awake. She said it was an accident. So you free, you go, you all of that. So I could go in, I could see her. And I went in to see her. I mean, what would you say at that moment? We couldn't say anything. We just know we have, we now have a new problem, which is we are at the hospital. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, what would you say? We both could not say anything to each other. We just kept quiet. We just stayed there. They discharged us, I think, the next day or so. But Inka was in pain, so we had to go back to the hospital. We met, went back to the hospital like a second time, and that this time they kept us for like a few more days. I think three to four days. I can't really remember. And after that, they discharged us again. But Inka was still in so much pain, so we went back to the hospital a third time. This time they referred us to another hospital. Where in those of you in Cyprus, we were in Famagusta. We were in a hospital in Famagusta. But this time they referred us to a hospital in Lefkosha in Onda City. So we had to move to another hospital in Onda City. We get there, um, they ran several tests to see what was happening. They said, um, you know, the cut on her neck was not just skin that I cut, it actually ruptured a, a, a tube in her neck and that tube led to her lungs and there was blood in her lungs now. So people of God, for like a month, Olaika and I were in the hospital. They had to operate on her three times. Yeah. Yes. They operated on Olaika three times. Was it three times or two times? Three times. Yeah. Am I wrong? Was it three times or two times? Three times. Yeah, the first two was to remove fluid from my lungs. The next, the last one, I think the last one was the one that was much more intense. The last one was the one that was much more intense. I still have videos from that day and all of that. I'll probably post that all with this, with this um, story time. We stayed in the hospital for so long that <laughs> we both sat with our demons. You see all those demons that were chasing us that we didn't want to hear. We, were, we knew we had a problem. We saw we had a problem, but we didn't want to learn. We didn't want to hear. We didn't want to know better. We stayed in the hospital for almost a month that we both he like heard it. Oh, we both heard it. I think I was angry. She was angry at me. She was angry at herself. She was angry at everything. I mean, she was in pain. Me? I was scared. I almost killed the person. I remember every night, after Yinka would have been medicated and she would have slept because I slept her all through, all through, all through. There are days I didn't shower. 
my hair was a mess when she would sleep i would go out to the car park we had the rental that we used to drive i would go out to the car park i would just sit down and i'll be looking at my hands i remember those nights like the visuals were just sitting and looking at my hands like oh more now so person if he keep person no do you know how scary it was scary to think i could have killed somebody's child i could have killed somebody i don't even want to cry I promise myself i'll not cry in this video i could have killed someone i could have killed somebody see is why when i talk about um if you if you experience inca and i together experience how tender and how compassionate and how much we put each other's needs before like you ask what's how where did we bottle and tie each other that experience taught us so much personally all those nights where i was looking at my hand all i was praying i was promising god that god please if i survive this one i promise you i'll break up with this girl i'll run away i'll break up with this girl i'll run away i made promises i was ready to break up and run once she gets better but we stayed in the hospital for one month then after hospital is now after care after care went on for months i think i couldn't walk around like she would like it was a lot of pain i couldn't leave I was ready to leave. I was ready to leave. But I couldn't. And during those period of taking care of her, she she became this really I experienced another side of her because I saw her depend on me for like a lot to shower, to stand up, to do this, to do that, right? I saw a side of her uh that was just tender and i don't know we started talking some more and i was just promising her just feel better we'll do anything you want we'll do we'll go out we start going out we start driving to like nearby cities for lunch for dinner we started actually coming out because we could afford to at the point where we we're doing things that helped like give us cash like we could afford to live a lifestyle where we we're enjoying life right so i said promise i just feel better babe we'll enjoy life i said you know just doing things to enjoy life and discovering life all over again and i feel like that gave us an avenue to find each other again and fall in love again like i was done with the relationship i was scared scared i was done and it wasn't just me we that experience scared us in like in so many ways even with ourselves, there was this rift between us. What held us? What kept us? I, I can tell you for a fact, like for the two years in our eight years relationship, Inka and I were like, we're more of friends than lovers, you know. And that was even the period where we seriously talked about polyamory and experiencing other points, just seeing that because we needed to make sense and unpack the experience we just experienced. So meeting, talking to other people was one of the ways we just like, yeah, you should, yeah. I actually would not lie, that helped. Opening up our relationship helped heal that experience because we were able to, for me, I was able to just go out and cry about it. Like I remember the first time I met up with someone like that. This happened in the year 2017. In the year 2018, I remember the first time I spoke to somebody that was not my partner about it, that was not my friend about it. Like my friend, my friend Shola knew about it, my my ex, like they knew, they just, we just didn't talk, that was a scary experience, so we, we don't talk about it. <laughs> Actually, we all just know what happened, but we just, we don't, it was a very scary experience, right? I remember the first time I talked about it, polyamory was the, the channel that, like, polyamory gave me um, a channel to be able to like, open up myself to somebody in safety to like talk about it and in 2018 i met up with someone in lagos Bogoburi hotel and that was the first time i just spoke about it right i was meeting up with this older woman she was married at the time and she seemed older wiser smarter more knowledgeable so i trusted her and when we started exchanging our traumas and everything that was the thing i wanted to talk about that was the thing that was heavy in my heart so that was the thing i just cried about that was the thing i spoke about so in 2018 i met oyaedu 
and that was she was a woman who I spoke about she was the first person I cried to about this she was like <sighs> I remember that night at Bogoburi how freeing it was for me to finally tell someone this secret that I've been carrying around and the person still slept with me afterwards like it felt like okay I'm not actually a bad person after all like cuz after that experience I kept like there was a way I villainized myself I saw myself as a villain like this bad person this right and being able to talk about it was freeing never in a million years would I believe, would I think that that person would you know turn around and just like tell the world about it but in a way that doesn't hold true for like the sequence of events because imagine I met this person in the year 20, 20, 2018 I was 23 years old when I met this person I was 23 years old when I met her at the, at, at the hotel where I cried to her and told her you know this darkness I was holding and she knew she knew how traumatized I was from like 18 from from 2018 when I was 23 and I kept I stayed in touch with this person till I was 26 I was 26 when we dated so imagine my surprise when this person calls me out for abuse using that story as like the lace to tie the story like she didn't know oh my god so I found out that she stabbed the person and I had to leave like no you knew from the very first day we met because you were the first person that i told the story to you were the first person outside of my immediate circle that i told the story to you were the person who actually encouraged my healing from the experience and i have been in in truth actually i've been healing from that experience till today this is not you is also one of my healing tool from that experience i'm at a place with that whole experience where i can tap into it be inspired by it and make a work from it and that is where I'm at right now I made the film this is not you that explores um, intimate partner violence because I have I have been there I've been in a very toxic relationship I've been you know uh, I've been at a really bad place with the person that I love and I, I I know what it can feel like I know what it can be like I know I was ignorant I know I was foolish and I was silly I know I honestly almost risked my life and sanity because if anything had happened to that babe if anything had happened to yinka i would have died too first first Turkish police would never have let me out till today i would have probably committed suicide in prison because what i was a kid i went from being this playful jovial kid to a person who killed a person that's i don't know how like so let me know even I, till tomorrow every time I, I want to think what would have happened if I tell myself no 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 thank God to just never think about it so domestic violence for me is something that you know is is something that I want to create works that raises awareness about like where does this come from some kids that you know they're experiencing their true their, their parents fight some kids that are being abandoned and neglected by their parents their side effects this childhood traumas they build into things and we can't keep saying you know people are responsible for their own this for their own traumas and the way they handle them people did not even choose their traumas some of them need help some of us need help if i didn't get a choice in being traumatized why is the healing being left solely to just me what if i need help so you know this experience has made me realize that there are several ways that a thing can happen i did not stab my girlfriend i did not raise i i remember when the story came out and people were tweeting about it many people were just like oh my god oh my god how can you steal someone who stabs you and then someone i remember someone made a tweet about how the only reason why somebody will stay with the person who stabs them is because of um something something syndrome when you stay when someone has abused you to a place where you cannot leave no that's not what happened between Olayinka and I. Yes, we were in a very pretty, shitty, shameful, I'm ashamed of that period of my life, of that period of our life, of that period of our, of our relationship. But I'm highly proud and I respect us both for how much we clawed from that place. Yinka and I clawed from that place. Like, after that thing happened, I remember every time we get angry, it just we both now know like we've seen the extreme we both now know why to be gentle we both now know why to not shout like you can't want to like there was a time we both got angry or something i can't remember what happened when somebody was angry and there was like a hold 
I remember we both hold ourselves like, babe, no, this is not it. This is not how, like, we're angry, but we needed to, like, establish this is not it. We know what, where this door leads to. So, yeah, some of you have heard the story of how Amara is this violent person, how Amara stabbed her partner, how Amara did this, how Amara did that. This is honestly the story of what happened. Yika and I paid truly for that experience. We are still paying till today. Inka still has scars on her body till today. I still have scars all over till today. The person I trusted with the story, the person I cried to, came out and used the story to lie to you for till tomorrow. I'm still paying for those lies. I, I still get turned down for things that, you know, that I'm suited for or eligible for or things that I should be giving because someone has Googled about me and saw that I abused someone and stabbed someone. I still get like, there are ways in which that, that whole experience has set me back but i thank god for god god who sees the truth god who witnesses everything i thank god for the universe because all i know is i know who i am i know who i've always been i know who i have struggled to be now who i am now right and i know what is for me will not pass me by i know what is for me would not ask me to defend myself or explain myself so whatever opportunities i'm losing or missing because people are seeing stories about me and abusing someone on google those opportunities are not for me and inka is my partner in this life inka is one person i trust to go through anything in life with that's you know do you understand that's how much this person is like my person right but um after this happened it was a lot on both ends and we just decided okay just everybody take what you need to heal and at first just like yeah let's experience other people but for me right now it's just with everything that's happened i mean in trying to experience on that person and you know trust with that person with this with this whole experience i invited a very vindictive person into our lives and that's almost wrecked us so right now i'm just trying to heal and unpack pack everything that i've ever experienced on my own so i know which one is my responsibility which one is my boundary and which one is other people because in this life there are things that you cannot escape from neither can you distract yourself from once they happen you actually have to sit with them and unpack them and that is where i'm at with like my life with like everything with this particular experience i am not seeking to unpack with you know a new person a new lover a new friend i can tell you in many ways almost everyone i've trusted with like this secret it used to be a secret right oh my god this church everybody almost everybody i've like trusted with this have in some way like just like pointed fingers at me in like different I, I don't know how to explain it like people judge you when you let them into things people and they don't even listen to what you're saying to them because like this story i didn't like in my head i didn't stab anybody and every time i tell this story i'm just like there was never a time where i intended to stab this person it was never by the time i went went to stop this person i was scared i was trying to get away i mean i wasn't necessarily scared of this person I, I don't want people to feel like like again the way i was comfortable in that toxicity was a problem so i should have been scared of this person not because that she was violent with me or she was but because that was a situation that could go bad and it did go bad right so i should have been scared of that situation we both should have actually been scared of the places we got with each other's anger but we weren't and you know something bad did happen and we learned the hard way we learned the hard way that we weren't invisible we learned the hard way that when you play with fire you you, you can get burned we did get burned we're still dealing with the scars till today Till today we are still healing till today but i'm just so glad and grateful that individually together we are at a place where we can not only articulate that experience but we can also talk about it without shame we can talk about it from an elevated place from a growth place we are not talking about from a place where we are still shouting at each other we are still calling each other names or we are still yelling at, like yinka and i are very gentle with each other is amazing people have called it out like you you both are so gentle with yourself that's because we learned the hard way we learned the hard way we know now that you know anything you fish out you feel it then whisper them. if you just like talk and come like do you understand like 
the heat doesn't have to come back home sometimes anger is a thing you leave the house with so it doesn't burn something in your home anger is a thing you quench sometimes yeah anger is a thing you pour water on not the matter the matter can happen can be discussed later but you see the anger quench it we both know now why you know <laughs> so yeah we are not we are we are both we are i'm just so glad we are at a place where we can talk about this from an elevated place i mean look at me i made a walk inspired from everything i've learned about this um i never wanted for you people to hear about this the way you put did i knew one day i'll probably share about it with you like i would probably share share this whole experience with people on youtube but you know last year when it was pulled Put, put out there the way it was put out there i was conflicted a part of me wanted to sit down and talk about it but i knew i was not in the headspace i was angry i was hurt i was humiliated i was embarrassed i was deeply wounded so there was no way i could have calmed down and just like take you through you know that experience and i wanted to talk about that experience on its own right so i didn't i didn't i didn't like i i knew i couldn't talk about it that period when it was happening um, but yeah, I didn't want people to find out the way you did and in many ways I even want to say oh I'm sorry the way you found out but it wasn't my call. It wasn't my call. I, um, I remember sometime um, I remember somebody tweeting about it last year saying if somebody stabs someone It's not a secret people should keep people should talk about people should call them out But that was not what happened This woman had, knew, had known about it for at least three years four years before she called it out the way she did that period She like do you understand like it was actually a secret that um, she could have kept. It wasn't. It was never her story to tell. It was a story that um, would have been told someday. But I, uh, you know, I'm glad I'm here to tell you, um, to share with you the story now, and to also tell you, Omo, if you're in that situation, if you're in a similar situation like what I just described, you both should leave. You both should leave. Leave leave that situation and run carry your friend and run if that person is not your friend then you run you run if you're in a sinking ship with your friend what would you do i remember writing so many poems that period just talking about being in a sinking ship with the person i love the most if you're in a sinking ship with your friend what would you do yinka and i had to learn how to swim we left that ship ship and we swam to the shore please run Please run. A burning house is not safe enough to keep you warm. Please, please run. All right. Lesbians, lesbians in the house. You put know once women tap into that anger that is buried inside of us, once it opens up, there's ah. Please run. Figure out how to run. Therapy, that is what therapists do. They help you to figure out a path to run from toxic relationships, whether alone or together. I'm not even saying stay there and fight for it. I'm not because your situation and my situation might not be the same, might not be the same. Your friendship with this person and your my friendship with Olenka might not be the same. If I know what I know now, then I probably would have even left Inka and ran away, honestly, to be frank. <laughs> but you know. Um, so yeah, therapy, seek for help. Help. everybody seek for help a burning house is not safe enough to keep you warm so talk to someone talk to a professional all right I am against violence of any kind not even in relationships even like senior beat junior brother beat sister my siblings know it was very confusing for my for my siblings to watch me be dragged for abuse and violence and they know me as this person who gets so and was the word disappointed with them when they fight i am against all form of violence all i know once that kind of one opened for me it took me a while to be able to like take everything out and throw them away and close the can it took me a long while because i had i too did not know that i had anger inside of me and having someone who was like you know who was navigating their own anger who was tasting their own anger like that triggered mine to blow up i did not know that was possible i thought you know you can be a i can be b you don't you won't influence me you won't color me but i had my own things inside of me too that having yinka the kind of person yinka was then around me 
wasn't good for me. Even me too. I was this person that when you trigger me, I'll shut up, I'll keep quiet, I'll look away, I'll off you for days. That triggered Yinka so much because she had like this abandonment trauma and all of that. So every sign of abandonment triggered her to just go harder, right? So yeah, know what your trauma is, know what your trauma style is, know who is triggering you and seek help. A burning house is not safe enough to keep you or your lover warm. Babe. 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 Babe, hey, hey. You know I can't fix it till you tell me, yeah? We talked about this. Again, I'm really just trying to help. <laughs> help? One of the greatest things I ever learned from a friend was do not think about it as good or bad. Think about it as necessary or unnecessary. In this world where many people are trying to be good people or masquerade as good people, most people are not checking to see if what they are doing is necessary or unnecessary. I have shared my life, my love, my stories with you over the years and once again I'm hoping you don't look in to see or check for a good person or a bad person. I am hoping you see what was necessary and what wasn't and at the end of the day we all look inwards to grow and not to judge ourselves. Thank you for being here.